like to talk about handicapping pool tournaments with Fargo ratings, in part because there's some, some new words, some new phrases, and, and some new concepts involved. Fargo rating is actually a rating system and not a handicap system. It rates pool players and it gives you information about what is expected to happen if two players match up. Whether you actually want to handicap events or use this information in some way is your choice. It's not something that, uh, that is inherent to, to Fargo ratings. So here's an example of the kind of information that we can get. Suppose the goose and, and the rabbit play a race to five. Both, both uh, players go to five. Based upon their Fargo ratings, and the goose is 90 points above the rabbit, the goose wins 83% of the time, 83% of these race to five matches. So that's about five out of six. Maybe you want to level the playing field a little bit. The goose is a better player than the rabbit, so you have the rabbit go to four instead of to five. And at this five-four matchup, the goose still wins 71% of the time. Well, maybe this is fine. Maybe this is all you want. Maybe this is enough uh, to make the rabbit actually show up uh, for the match and have a fighting chance, but you still leave an advantage to the goose. Or maybe you want to consider handicapping it further. At 5-3, to three, the match is close to 50-50. The goose still has a slight advantage, but it's very close to even. And some people say, oh, this match is a coin flip, uh, as though this match is just determined by chance or by statistics or something like that. Uh, but that's, that's not a fair characterization. The match can be close to 50-50, and what determines the winner in any particular match is who got the most sleep, who, who bears down, who stays down on the shots, who is bringing their own personal A-game uh, to this match. If we go one step further and have the rabbit go to only two, a five to two race, you see that the tides have changed, the rabbit now actually has the advantage, and nobody in their right mind would want to purposefully do that. So here's a way to look at the exercise we, we just went through. We started with a series of potential matchups, five to five, five to four, five to three, and five to two, and our goal is to select the one that, that meets our criteria. But let's take a, a closer look at our choices for potential matchups, five to five, five to four, five to three, and five to two. And, and let's imagine that we have a tournament where these are the possible matchups. A five to five uh, is going to require at least five games to complete, and it may require as many as nine games to complete if, it's, if it ends up with a five to four score. If a game takes 10 minutes, that's between 50 minutes and 90 minutes. Compare that to the 5-2 matchup. That requires at least two games to complete and as many as six games to complete, but never more than six. So that's going to require between 20 minutes and 60 minutes to complete. There's a mismatch here. So let me introduce the idea of a match chart. A match chart is a collection or grouping of potential matchups that are expected to take a similar amount of time to, to complete. It's a good idea if you're running a tournament to have the different matches have the same potential maximum time. And, and all of these take at most nine games to complete. But let's do two things before we complete this match chart and give it a name. Let's first reject all matchups that are too lopsided. And we'll define too lopsided as rejecting any matchup for, for which the higher rated player needs to win more than three times the number of games as the lower rated player. So that gets rid of eight to two and nine to one. And the other thing we'll do is add in the intermediate matchups, five to four and six to three. So notice the three we started with uh, all add to 10, five to five, six to four, seven to three, and the two that we added add to nine. We'll take these five matches and we'll call them match chart R5 because they're based upon a base race to five. So let's go back to the, to the goose and the rabbit. As you recall, when they played five to five, the goose wins 83% of the time. What about the other matchups that are in the R5 match chart? And here's the chance of the goose winning for all of the matchups in chart R5. Note for the top three matchups, the goose is still the favorite. And for the bottom two matchups, the, the, the advantage switches over to the rabbit. We're doing a handicap tournament. Which one of these do we pick? Well, this is where the, the concept of hot, medium, and mild handicaps comes in. With a hot handicap, we're going to pick six to four because that is the most weight possible without shifting the advantage to the lower rated player. So it is the one where the rabbit has as big a chance as possible without actually having an advantage. And here's what medium and mild means. Once again, hot means that you're going to select the match that is as close to 50-50 as possible without the higher rated player, the goose here, losing the advantage, i.e. without the goose going under a 50% chance to win. 
So that leads to a six to four matchup in this case. Medium handicaps means you're going to get as even as possible, give the rabbit as much weight as possible without the goose going under 60%. That also leads to a six to four matchup in this case. Mild handicaps means as even as possible without the goose going under 70%. In other words, you're not going to, with mild handicaps, you're never going to award weight to the rabbit that gives the rabbit greater than a 30% chance of winning the match. So this is what it looks like if, if we use the fair match calculator, selected match charts, put in the goose's rating of 590 and the rabbit's rating of 500, and then selected R5 for chart R5. You see those same matchups, five to five, four to five, four to six, four, uh, three to six, and three to seven. And you see which one is selected according to hot handicaps, medium handicaps, and mild handicaps. This is the exercise we just went through. Here's another example using chart R11 for the goose and the rabbit. Uh, they would play eight to 14, a six game spot with hot handicaps, eight to 13, a five game spot with medium handicaps and 9 to 13, a four-game spot with mild handicaps. Here's what several of the match charts look like. You see chart R5 in the middle, the one we've been talking about. And when you specify a tournament, you might use chart, let's say chart R5 all the way through on both sides of the double elimination tournament, or you might choose to use R5 on, on the A side and R4 on, on the one loss side. Uh, specifying a tournament will be specifying a chart, say R3, and a handicap level, hot, medium, or mild. So a tournament that uses chart R3 and medium handicaps, if you had two players rated 630 and 500, a difference of 130 points, you could either con consult a chart on the wall uh, and look at the medium column and say at 130 points, you would play a three to two match. Or you can plug those same ratings into fairmatch.fargoray.com, select uh, match charts, and then chart R3 and consult the medium column to see the same thing. It's a three to two matchup. So you'll see tournament software in the future with these sorts of options built in. But for now, I hope you have answered the questions, what is a match chart? What do the labels R3, R4, R5, and so forth mean? And what is meant by hot, medium, and mild handicaps?